נשתחה בשלום לכל המאזינים היקרים שלנו בארץ ובעולם. אנחנו עולים לשידור עם הרב דניאל עשור. My name is uh, Daniel, Daniel Asso, and I'm uh, directing this lecture to the American people in Central America and Canada, and uh, all the Jewish community around the world that listening uh, to this lecture. I'd like to share with you, uh, first of all, um, Through the Talmud, we know um, in Gemara, Sanhedrin, and Perak Chalik, um, page Tzadik um, Chet, uh, Amud Aleph, the Gemara says that Amarav uh, and Ben David Ba Achet it Pashet Amalchut Bechol Haolam Kulo, meaning um, the, the Messiah. son of David, I mean, I mean Mashiach, son of David, will not come till the, um, the uh, kingdom of Rome will spread all over the world, uh, nine months before the Messiah will come. And the same thing, um, I mean, the Gemara doesn't really uh, specify who, who is the kingdom, It doesn't, the Gemara in Sanhedrin doesn't say Rome, but it said the Malchut. actually pashat the malchut, till the kingdom will spread all over the world. But uh, the, the quote in the Gemara uh, uh, refer to Rav, which is um, Tana and Amora, and uh, he um, specifically uh, explained himself in the Gemara, Masechat Yoma, page 10, Ten by saying nine months before the Messiah will come, then the Persian will fail in a war uh, under uh, the uh, kingdom of Rome, meaning Rome will rule the world and spread its kingdom all over the world nine months before Mashiach, son of David, will come. It's um, pretty clear to the Talmud Um, what's coming and um, the Tosfot in Masechet Avda Zara Taf Bet Amud Bet in Dibur HaMatchil Mashcha Malchutayu explained that the kingdom of the Persian and Rome will go on till the Messiah will come and then uh, Tosfot is, is uh, um, you know, uh, precisely speaking about the fact that since we know uh, that Divrei Rav, what Rav say in Masechet Sanhedrin, that nine months before the Messiah will come, then the Persian will fail in a war before, uh, uh, under, under the, the Rome Empire. And we do know that um, those kingdom, the Persian, which is the head of the Arabs, of uh, the Arab uh, uh, countries, or na nationality, and the uh, Rome, which represent um, the uh, Christian uh, or the Adamite uh, uh, race, then uh, the fight between them will go on till nine months before the Messiah will come, and then the Adamite will rule the world for the last nine months before the Messiah will come. So then, Nine months represent the pregnancy and the deliverance of the redemption of the end of time. And Chavle Mashiach, obviously, let's see, uh, last nine months before the Messiah will come, will be um, a tough time um, for us. And uh, uh, it's, it's just like Chavle Mashiach, we speak about the... Uh, great suffer uh, before the Messiah will come before the birth of the redemption of the nation of Israel uh, and, and the w entire world as well 
but anyways, uh, what I would like to to um, increase awareness by this lecture is that we, as an Israelis and 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 the Jewish community around the world, um, are concentration concentrating on one enemy, which is the Arab League and the uh, Islam, and we don't pay attention to another angle of attack, I would say, which is uh, basically the Adamite, and we are, we, we are in a big cultural fight with the Adamite, and uh, this fight is being described by the, by the Torah as a fight from the ancient time between bet between Jacob and Esau, not Ismael, which is the Arabs, but rather Esau, which is the the Edomite, which is Christianity, basically, or you can say even the Amalekite, basically, they came from the same source, uh, the Edomite. It's a, f a fight from the dawn of human history between Jacob and Esau. Uh, it's a fight over over the blessing and over the uh, um, inheriting the blessing of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, uh, and, and the father, for our forefathers, um, inheriting the blessing of, of God, uh, and who gonna uh, gonna get the blessing, whether uh, Esau or Jacob, and they fight from the stomach of Rebecca in the ancient time, from the dawn of human history, throughout human history, till we have ish imo adalot hashachar, till the, um, um, the, uh, the sunrise of 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 of, um, of the redemption in, in the end of time. We don't say ve'alu moshiim mehar tzion lishpot et har ishmael. We don't say ve'alu moshiim har tzion lishpot et mecca. Or hello, Moshim Martin Shpotel Medina. No, we don't say that. Um, we say hello, Moshim Martin Shpotel Tar Esav, which is the Adamite. Again, we see clearly that the cultural fight throughout history, from ancient time uh, to the end of time of human history, it's between Isa and Jacob. And um, it's a cultural fight over over the spirituality, over the blessing, over um, uh, it's a cultural fight. And um, just to um, to uh, understand better, if we're gonna take off our our own personal glasses, and we gonna we're gonna put the glasses of the Rishonim and the Tanaim and the Moraim to view uh, the end of time period and to understand it better, then we're going to see clear that Aramban didn't see, didn't see the, uh, the Ishma Ishmaelite as the greatest enemy of the end of time. When he argued with Peri Paul, which is a representative of the church before before uh, the um, uh, king of um, um, of Sfarad in in Europe, then um, Peri Paul, the representative of the church, which is a Jewish converter to Christianity, um, was asking Ramban, why is it that in your Gemara, um, in um, Perak Chelik in Sanhedrin, the Messiah is sitting? by the gate of Rome. What he is doing in the, at, the, at the gate of Rome? And then uh, Aramban responded that basically since the, uh, what, what, what there is in, in Rome, Rome represents the Vatican, Rome represents a culture uh, that, that, that um, were able to rule the world uh, and, uh, in, in a human history, in a period of, and then they de destroy the Temple of Jerusalem, and the Second Temple of Jerusalem, and he responds, "You are our first enemy. 
and therefore the Messiah is sitting there by the gate of Rome to wipe you out, to destroy you. And um, and basically, um, we got to understand that Aramban is saying when he was asked, um, and in the in the book of of, of uh, war, Milchamot. Uh, Ramban used to, to, to do arguments, theological arguments, and he was saying that when Moshe Rabbeinu, when he was born, he didn't come as a Messiah to redeem us from Egypt. He is the first redeemer, and he didn't come when he was born. He didn't come when he was growing he, he, till the age of 80, but he came only when he went by being a, a messenger of God to Pharaoh, and he told him, let my people go. Then he came, and that's what's going to take place in the end of time when our Mashiach, son of David, will go to the Pope and ask him, let my people go. That's what the Ramban says. So the Ramban probably saw the Pope in Rome uh, just, equal to the pharaoh in Egypt and he saw the Edomites of the, uh, the, the uh, of the end of time as 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 the Egyptian and and basically it's a, it's a, it's a big surprise what what kind of power the, the pope has he doesn't have any, any any power it seems like he didn't have any power uh, but Actually, we probably don't really recognize or don't see what behind the veil. Uh, but actually, Ramban is pretty right. He is. Um, there is a power uh, behind the Vatican, and the power behind the Vatican is unclear to us because they work and operate behind the veil. It's a shadow government which is, you know, um, um, operating um, um, behind what we, behind the scene, let's put it like that. Um, there is a concept called New World Order. And the cause, concept of New World Order meaning um, a group of people that they're, they're interested in, in creating one world government, what one economic power, and they think that it's better to wipe out all the nationality around the world and all the the different religion around the world and to create one world government and maybe even one world religion. And... Um, Basically, the concept of New World Order, it's not a, exactly a conspiracy no more. We can see a compatible evidence to it when Henry Kissinger is speaking about New World Order, when uh, Bush, the president, the father, and the son were speaking clear and loud about the plan of New World Order. Um, basically, when, when you hear Obama speak about New World Order. So therefore, it's not a conspiracy theory, uh, like many people think. There is a plan of a group of people, which uh, a, a lot of respected people uh, speak about. And that plan, basically, it's a pyramid uh, of, uh, of, of power which we should ask ourselves who is standing on the top of that pyramid. And basically the answer is the Pope in the Vatican is standing in the top of this pyramid, but not the white one, but there is another uh, Pope, and the, the Pope behind the scene is the black Pope, which is in, in Rome, which is um, uh, standing on the top of the pyramid. This pyramid of power basically tends to operate and to control governments 
and to operate when our consciousness is sleeping. And uh, that's a strategy uh, that exists uh, since uh, 1540, uh, when the um, uh, Jesuit order inside the Vatican was founded by uh, Loyola, which is uh, the founder of this uh, order. Um, at the, uh, the year 1776, there was a professor called Adam Weisbrot, which is which were, were part of the Jesuit order. And he got an order from the Jesuit order to pretend that he is living the order and to um, a- enter. He, he was, at the same time, part of the Freemason um, which is an esoteric um, um, group of people. And um, he was able to create a secret society inside a secret society of the Freemason, which become the top of the secret society. And uh, they, call it, uh, they, they call themselves Illuminati. The Illuminati uh, was found to, by Adam Weisbrot, by uh, Rothschild family that uh, desire uh, uh, the money of uh, the planet Earth to uh, themselves, and the uh, Jesuit order that desire the control under the Pope because they swear uh, and they believe in the prophecy as a, a divine a, a power and a, and uh, therefore they, they they work just like an army. Uh, it seems like that, like if they're uh, you know, spiritual people, but it's a meta- the exterior metaphor. Basically, they're, uh, it's, they they operate just like an uh, just like an army, and and their goal is to control the world and to bring the world under the control of the Pope in Rome. And um, um, the, um, when you say, uh, when you say the uh, follower of Shabtai Tzvi, which is Yaakov Frank, the Frankistin, also they want to wipe out the morality of the Jews, uh, which is the belief in the transcendental power of God. They, they, they. Uh, they um, uh, Yako, Ashab um, um, uh, and uh, Yako Frank, they came to a conclusion uh, of of an ethics conclusion that there is no. Basically, at the end, they came to an ethics uh, conclusion, and they need to. They want to wipe out the belief in God. They want to wipe out the morality of uh, Judaism uh, from uh, and their influence on uh, the Western society. Uh, so, therefore, those three components, which is uh, uh, the, uh, the Yaakov Frank uh, society and the Jesuit order and the um, uh, say the uh, Rothschild, three, three of them with Adam Weisbrot that founded this uh, Illuminati group in 1776, they start to operate are underneath uh, um, to penetrate any government and to control, to try to, to achieve control um, over the world. Now, the problem is that nowadays we see, um, we see that many presidents in, in the United States basically uh, share this concept of new world order and they were able to succeed to penetrate uh, the CFR counseling foreign relation which is uh, another uh, uh, arm of uh, of that group of, uh, of uh, trying to uh, basically um, um, achieve a new world order and they don't operate necessarily as a American patriot Americans, they operate for the goal of the new world order through the media, through uh, 
um, uh, different ways um, to influence and to control the mind of the population through the media. Uh, how the Wall Street component, which is the bunkers of Wall Street, and uh, a few families like a Rockefeller family, a Rothschild family, and uh, Morgan families, and then, uh, some others, that uh, basically they're the bunkers of that same group, that same, I would say, mafia of the Illuminati. And, um, and there is uh, uh, another group, which is the politicians of that mafia, that's trying to achieve the same goal, the New World Order, which called the Bilderberg, which is 120 politicians gathering together in Europe and making decisions for uh, together what's going to take place in the world so they can achieve a new world order each year. And um, uh, it's possible to see them. There is a compatible evidence that they exist. There is um, um, uh, many, uh, uh, many people that uh, could uh, testify and even uh, show uh, clips and and, and 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 show the gathering as well um, over the internet. But what do exactly what relate to us as Jewish people in America? I would say I'm directing my my um, my lecture here to the Jewish community in America. Those that group of people basically are atheist people. They present themselves as a believers, but it's a deception. They're trying to wipe out religion and to create one world concept, which is not necessarily belief in the transcendental power of something above nature, but a, a religion of nature, to believe in nature. So therefore, as, as a... As a international belief. So therefore, they're, they're fighting the concept of the Bible. They're fighting, the, fighting Judaism, and they claim that basically Judaism is the mother of the religion in the Western society, which is Christianity, and Islam as the left and right arms of Judaism, or, or, or they came out from the Bible, emerged from the Bible, and therefore uh, uh, the source and the enemy of that uh, uh, of, of, of the New World Order basically going to be the going to be Judaism, the Bible vision, and and uh, of, of the end of time, and uh, they have their own uh, vision of what they see uh, human society is supposed to achieve. Now they want to um, depopulate world and um, through many books we see for example a book of uh, the UN agenda 21 uh, clearly uh, we can see through that that it's that they're intending to to depopulate the world and uh, depopulate meaning uh, in, in many ways, there is a, a, a plan in, during the day of peace how to do it and how to um, to avoid, a, you know, a natural growth uh, of uh, of uh, and and, and um, uh, big families and through many things, many ways, from medicines through um, um, food. But there is some other plans. Uh, for example, we do see in the United States by now um, 800 concentration camps uh, in America that's being spread all over the country, all over the United States, Central America. And um, even through the map of uh, Google, it's possible to, to go down and see them and see the places. The problem is that I would not say it if the American government would reject or deny the fact 
that they exist, but they don't deny the fact that they exist. They just try to explain why and what the reason they exist. But we, as a Jew, we don't have to accept explanations when we have foundation for Holocaust. We don't, we're not supposed to believe that the, the human nature was changed from 70 years ago from Germany to America um, because we supposed to at least learn something from the Holocaust of Germ of Europe about the nature of humanity. Uh, and uh, I think that any Jew should consider and think if, if there is a, a, a foundation for um, for Holocaust in my in my country, should I go on living in that same place and accepting the ex different explanations of why they exist? The fact that, that the concentration camps, 800 concentration camps that can contain 50 million people um, exist in America, it's undis undisputable. The government agree, uh, and they don't deny the fact. The fact that there is millions of disposable coffins, which are called casket liners, that actually they're basically um, disposable coffins all over uh, Medicine, Georgia, and uh, and uh, some other places in the Midwest, just like uh, Dan Buhan, uh, Buhan was able to find and to testify and to um, show uh, over the Internet that uh, they exist. And I know that we as a Jewish community, we don't, we're not exposed to the Internet. We don't expose to... But when there is a dangerous... When is uh, when we need to increase awareness, when when we need to be careful, we should watch out to see not only the truth but you know a Diane supposed to see also in reality not only uh, uh, through the scriptures and the Torah but also to watch out from reality but to to judge. Emet la mita. Emet la mita. It's also uh, uh, to see emet, which is the Torah, to at emet not lano, but to see also reality, and to to put them together, and, and to be able to view a, a, a three-dimensional picture uh, of, of, uh, of 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 what we what we stand before. I'd like to point another another point that Ari Kadosh Arizal is saying that anything that we want to learn about about the redemption of the end of time, we have to spare or to study it from from Egypt. The prophet Micha is saying in, in chapter chapter seven that by the end of the chapter before he finished his book, um, prophe the, uh, the prophecy book in the Bible, he says, he many times, just like the days of Egypt, I will show miracles to the nation of Israel by the end of time. So everything that we want to know about the future, we should stare and learn from the Egypt exile and the redemption of Mitzrayim. And therefore, Rabbeinu uh, in in, uh, in Parashat Bo is saying that he has a, a compelable evidence that by the end of time, the Edomite will get ten flags, just like in Egypt, Dam, Tzfardea, Kinim, Arov, and he's proving it through um, uh, you know, blood, uh, frogs, and, and all, the, all those uh, flags, uh, uh, flags of, of, from Egypt, the same way that's going to, that's what's going to take place in the end of time, just ten times greater than what we saw in Egypt. And so basically, Ramban is viewing 
the the Edomite as uh, of the end of time uh, as uh, the Pope as a Pharaoh and and Rabbeinu Bechaye is proving through Chagai's uh, Charia Malachi through the Bible uh, through scriptures that the Edomite is supposed to to uh, by the end of time to to be hit by 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 God ten pledge uh, just like in Egypt just in a greater way ten times than than in the ancient times. So maybe we missed something. Well, maybe we were focusing on on the fight with the Arabs, which is another angle of attack of, of another enemy. But if we can see in Yalkuchi Moni and be able to study from Yalkuchi Moni that that Yalkut Uveni, I'm sorry, Yalkut Uveni, it's saying the Messiah son of Joseph is supposed to take care of the Arabs by the end of time. The Messiah son, Mashiach son, son of David, he is, you know, he is fighting another another fight. It's more of a cultural fight. It's over the over the soul. It's over the many souls that we, that we lost throughout. A, 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 a human history to uh, that converted to particular Christianity or emerge with the Adamite uh, by ass- through assimilation, which is uh, the quiet Holocaust, like I, I call it, uh, we call it uh, the assimilation uh, Holocaust that, that we can see uh, through America, Europe, um, and just in order to you to understand. You have to, to understand one thing, that we are in the Edom exile. The, the people that destroyed the temp- second temple of Jerusalem were the, the, the Roman, it was the Roman Empire. And the Roman Empire were conquered by Christianity. And since then, Inquisition and, and uh, uh, Suffer and, and Crusades and and, and many, many uh, executions and, and many, many suffer throughout the, that exile, and, and we, we tend to forget our, our history, our ten, 2,000 years of history, uh, that our greatest enemy were the Edomites. And uh, most, more specifically, the Vatican, uh, which tend to rule uh, Christianity throughout those uh, you know, thousands of years. And, uh, and basically, we have to understand uh, one more thing. We now, after the Second, Second World War, tend to think that something changed and since, okay, uh, throughout those few thousand years, uh, our greatest enemy was the Edomite, but now we have eight wars with the Arabs and we tend to fight over land with the Arabs here in Israel and all the terrorism of the Muslims but we get to understand one thing that even nowadays since 1946 uh, right after the Second World War and t- till now the the the, the, the quiet Holocaust, which is the assimilation Holocaust, were able to hurt the existence and the survival of the human nation, even in a in a in a in a greater, I'd say, heat, uh, uh, greater than than and and har- harming us much more than the uh, um, the Arabs, because we lost. Through those 70 years, over who knows, over seven million people through assimilation, and uh, it, that's why exactly uh, that's a metaphor of it. It's such a Jacob is fighting with the angel of 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 of, of Isa, and he got hurt with Gidan Nashe, and Gidan Nashe represents Anashe, which is. Gidon Hashem, it's, it's, it's to, to forget, to cause uh, uh, to, to, uh, the children of Jacob to forget 
the existence of God and to assimilate. Let's see, assimilation. That's why he is walking toward the redemption. Jacob is walking to the redemption, and he, he was able to win, uh, and, but 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 he's, he doesn't walk right. He is um, he got hurt in his in his leg, and 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 he got hurt in Gidon Asher, and that's why we don't eat Gidon Asher. But it represents through Rabbi Shun Ba'ochai in the Zohar says it represents the um, the, the assimilation to represent that, that that the angel of 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 Isa of the other man were able to hurt his children of Jacob and to cause them assimilation and to forget because it's it's a gid and a shade the, the gid of the birth that's what Zohar said to give birth uh, um, for the toladot of Yaakov you know. But I would like to uh, emphasize on the point that when, if there is, if the, if the, if the fact that we see 800 concentration camps around America and we see um, millions of disposable coffins and America giving many different kind of explanations and things are, and the, and the explanations are not exactly clear. Uh, every one of us is supposed to think whether what, what's going on, and 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 the, all the red lines, all the red, uh, uh, I'd say, um, lights in his cockpit supposed to turn on, and to think, what am I doing here? And um, I, I, I'm calling you, people that are living in Central America. To listen to Rabbi Chaim Kanievsky that says a month ago I directed his, his voice to, toward you to tell you come back to Israel and uh, something is about to happen in America we probably predict uh, through the Gemara through uh, 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 our our pr- predictions through the prophecies that a big world holocaust is about to take place because the new world order want to depopulate the world in 90 percent and to leave only 500 million people um, um, in the world and who are those people uh, un- undesirable people they don't, they don't want them to be exist oh, well definitely since the new world order it's an atheist group of people that pretending to be, you know, a part of the population so they can be popular and control them, but actually underneath the carpet they're basically a group of atheist people that want to wipe out any religion. So therefore, you got we got to understand we as a Jew Jewish people in a great dangerous around the world. We need to come to Israel in the end of time, because when the third world war will take place and we see it coming, then the world will be, say, a flood of fire that the land of Israel will be the only ship of Noah of the end of time from the flood of fire. We got to understand also that the Shekhinah, and uh, that went to the exile and right after the destruction of the Temple of Israel because we went on exile and and at Chashivat de Miyoma de Itcharib at Migdasha de Alana Bebita Dili said Eliyahu Navi um, you, Knesset Israel, you thought that me, Ashechina, Akedosha, I, I, I left the earth to heaven no, no, I went to the exile with the nation of Israel. That's what Patach Eliyahu, Eliyahu Navi, is saying. And, and basically, now it's about time that the redemption is about to come, and therefore the Shekhinah is leaving the exile and coming back to Har Moria to Jerusalem, and therefore we, we do see it coming. We see that basically the world will 
start to fight with one another around the world. It's going to be like a huge hurricane that's going to create a third world war. But And they out to come uh, with that hurricane or that tornado to um, fight over Jerusalem. So naturally it's going to be look like if Jerusalem will be or Eretz Israel will be the most dangerous place uh, naturally, but actually we have to put in mind two things. When there is a hurricane and the eye of the hurricane is the right place to be, the most safe place, because everything around will be will basically wipe out. And, and that's going to be the only place to be and to be safe. But another point is that God is bringing that, that, that third world war to come and because the New World Order want Jerusalem to be the capital of the New World Order, and therefore they're going to come here to control the world from Jerusalem because they want to fight the religion of the world, the big three religion, and they see Jerusalem as the homeland of those huge religions. They want to defeat them in their homeland and to wipe them out from the field of human history. So therefore, they're going to come specifically to Jerusalem, but then they don't re realize that it's a plan of God to bring them here together because the New World Order group ex that exists now uh, contain now also the Arab League and um, a Christian countries together and uh, and basically the, um, we got to understand the two temples of Jerusalem were, were destroyed by the first one were, were by the, the, uh, the Babylon which is the Iraqi, Iraqi country which is a basically Muslim country and the second temple were destroyed by the Christian basically the, the Edomite and God is about to bring them here to take a revenge from them, and therefore they're going to fight one another. Just like the prophet Zechariah is saying, and they're going to fight one another here and uh, and kill one another here to 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 a point where nine months before the Messiah, Meshbashiach, the son of David, will come, then the Ismailite will fall. Uh, and before uh, the Roman Empire, and they're going to control for nine months the entire world and cause a, a world holocaust to the entire world. But we got to understand one thing. The nation of Israel were the first one to experience slavery in Egypt to direct humanity out of slavery. And they went through, the Jewish nation went through Holocaust. First one to go through Holocaust to uh, to show the world the way out of the uh, uh, world uh, humanity Holocaust that will occur in the end of time by the new world order. It seems like it's a, they have a good intention to unite, but it's a cover story. The real story is for, uh, to take over the world by private hands and to control who are going to live and who are going to die and to have their own vision of how humanity is supposed to look like. And, and um, basically, just to explain uh, 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 more what in their mind is... Um, I got to explain that they do believe in Darwin. They believe that that uh, since they're atheists and they don't believe in, in God, and they believe in in in, in a in a uh, coincidental creation, uh, coincidental uh, development of, of of evolution of 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 um, uh, planet Earth, 
and and uh, a condition of life and uh, of life in on earth and and and, and life on earth out of a, a materialistic uh, uh, way then uh, a matter then they don't believe in God they believe in nature and now they see what they see is since they claim that everything is only natural there is no transcendental transcendental power or above nature or God so therefore they think that they should be God because they claim that there is a, a, a survival fight just like in the jungle in the same way in the human field because in human history because we are only a type of animals so therefore that's what that's the way they view us view themselves so therefore um, there is a fight in the jungle between the animals over uh, survival over the natural sources over um, uh, um, you know, you know and, and basically the rules of, of, of the jungle is the strong is living and the weak is supposed to be wiped out and uh, therefore they want to wipe out the weak because they claim that it's impossible to go on like that when we the quantity of humanity is growing and growing and growing and the quality of life is being reduced more and more more and more and more and basically we're growing natural growth uh, but usually the big families are the poor families and the less educated people and therefore they think that they need to active actively be involved to improve humanity that going becoming more and more stupid and becoming you know uh, uh, more and more poor and 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 less educated and and to improve humanity and also because there is a fight over land and over natural sources and over fuel and because there is a um, um, uh, uh, um, Pure part of in 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 the ozone and uh, X-ray that coming for, for into in, into the atmosphere, and and they do believe also that we as a human being we are uh, the enemy of nature because we breathe uh, oxygen oxygen and we uh, we pol we pollute the air by uh, CO2 and and we cause we cause uh, uh, global warming in, in, in the planet Earth uh, that soon going to lose its capability to hold life and the condition of life on planet Earth will be gone. So therefore, there is no, um, according to uh, philosophy, there is no other um, choice but, but getting rid of, of most of the population on Earth and, 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 and the weak. But the question is, who is the weak? Who are those weak people, undesirable people, and who are those strong people? Therefore, if we tend to look at that philosophy, Hitler used also to, Imach Shemov Shamzicho used also to hold that same strategy. But he thought that the, you know, uh, the Aryan race is the, is the, Top race and, and the the Jews race is is the lower uh, weak uh, race that's supposed to be wiped out. That's what he felt because he had his own philosophy, and I'm not going to get into it. It's not it's not the right place to to really um, yeah, dig into his uh, Hitler philosophy. He wrote the book uh, My Kampf, and and then he was explaining why the Jewish nation is supposed to be wiped out. They claim that they live above nature, their own lifestyle. They're like like if uh, um, un unnatural uh, life, uh, and they committed to to a, a supreme power of God, and therefore they deny uh, nature, and according to him there is only natural power uh, that created us, uh, and therefore we are not thankful enough toward nature 
and we're supposed to be wiped out by natural in, in a natural way because we don't accept nature uh, or or uh, we don't tend to um, uh, appreciate nature. But uh, it doesn't really matter what Hitler felt because after the Second World War he was defeated. But he, many people doesn't know that Hitler was defeated only militantically, but not cons conceptually. Uh, uh, um, um, but because his his concept, uh, uh, the concept of of of, uh, of new world order, still exists, and the concept of uh, the praise and the lower race and the, the weak and the strong, it's part of the evolution theory and and the survival fight that they think that they exist in nature. And, um, and a chain, a food chain that exists in nature, and a fight between you know um, different kind of animals so, so that exist in nature. So therefore, it's part of, of their philosophy. Therefore, they decide something co completely else after the Second World War. Uh, they're more open, and they're not a, a, a race. A, a, races but they think that that the strong people are the people that honva shilton that that control humanity through you know politicians that have power because the people population vote them to guide them so they're the strongest people and and, and the top people of humanity that's supposed to be live and also um the wise uh, people of science and uh, that have, you know, a uh, genius brain and uh, gen represent geniusity of, of humanity, and uh, and and the wo the wealthy people that were able to fight the survival fight and to climb to the top through money, through wealth, and those are the people that's supposed to the greatest people of humanity. So therefore. Now it's there is a um, the the mafia basically they they betrayed humanity the population and and it's a mafia of of hon shilton of people uh, and that that uh, they're in power and in control they have wealth and 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 politicians and and, and, and control through uh, and, uh, through government. Those are the people that's supposed to to go on and 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 live and 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 most of the people are supposed to be poor people are supposed to be wiped out. Therefore, what I see is we see the, their philosophy. We see that they're getting more and more power, gaining more and more power, and uh, we see that they're capable of building 800 concentration camps around America and you understand what's behind it they even wrote it in books they there is a um, in, in Georgia a, a place where there is a huge stones that they wrote their agenda in Sanskrit in in, in a, some other languages in, in, in Russian, in, in, in English. And, uh, I think that even in Hebrew, I don't really recall, but I can. Uh, I know that it, in many uh, languages, they want to 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 uh, wipe out 90% of, of 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 humanity, which is uh, the fourth Reich being planned to humanity. We got to understand that the Jews that God allowing them to play for the time being to show humanity that without him the evilness will control humanity and bring humanity to uh, a self-destruction. So therefore they have to seek him and to 
ask him to get involved in human history. So it's definitely going to take place because we have, as a Jewish people, covenant through Mount Sinai, covenant with God between God and humanity through the nation of Israel as a testifying people, that, that when we're going to keep the Torah and the mitzvot, then God will get involved and he's obligated. It's not that only we obligate to keep the commands in the Torah and the Ketshuva and the Tefillah and, and, and study Torah day and night, but also the covenant is God is committed to the nation of Israel. He will get involved because of the covenant of Mount Sinai with the nation of Israel in the field of human history to save humanity from the nation of Israel from its evilness from the new world order. But it's according to our Gemara, we do know, uh, first of all, we know that the power to save humanity, we are the light of the nations, just like the prophet uh, Ishayahu say, uh, that the nation, nations will walk be, behind us uh, uh, through uh, uh, after our light and after our uh, shining light of the nation of Israel, of Knesset Israel. Um, just like the prophet Ishaya was saying, that uh, the, the darkness and, 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 and the Rafael, which is a, a fog or a darkness, it's covering earth, covering the nations. And the sh- and, and, and light of God is shining upon Knesset Israel, upon the na- nation of Israel, and, and therefore we we have to guide humanity and to save them by what mean. Naturally, there is no way; it's a dead end because the New World Order already gained control over you know UN. Basically, they founded UN and uh, United Nations, and they control, you know, it's basically everything is under the Club of Rome, which is the top of the pyramid, and uh, the kingdom in, in England. And, uh, you know, they have uh, a builder, builder group, and they have the CFR, Counseling Foreign Relations in the United States, so, which is the media power, and uh, controlling the mass population through the media, and they're, you know, thoughts and knowledge by giving limitation to their knowledge through the media because they control the news and uh, through the bunkers of Wall Street because they control the money and the power and the World Bank and therefore and the Federal Reserve and Bohemian Grove which is a club of, of, of the Mafia and we got to understand one thing the three signs uh, group, which is another group of people that consider those three components, which is the money, Wall Street, the politicians, Bilderberg, the media and uh, the public relations of the mafia, which is the CFR. And basically, they take all the information and they, they, they put them together and give orders to Obama and to the White House. Therefore, we got to understand that the Jews are supposed to run from America. And, well, um, I was cut off, and I'm uh, going on with the lecture. Um, I just want to increase awareness by saying that uh, any uh, one of us... Uh, that live in Central America is supposed to consider the fact that the American government released a, a document to the population and uh, explaining what's going to take place in case of an emergency. Um, 
the President of the United States can make a decision on his own um, and um, to change the government from uh, a civil government to um, a martial law or a federal government. And martial law is going to take place. What exactly are the law, the martial law, are there is a detail, uh, uh, details uh, that being uh, uh, presented to the public that in case of a martial law, all the um, airports in America will be shut down automatically. So nobody going to be able to escape America in case of a martial law. Uh, nobody can wait for the last minute and then uh, say, okay, when the martial law will, go, will take place, then I'm going to run away from America because everything, every, all the airports will be shut down automatically. All the foods, it doesn't really matter if you, you have a grocery or you have a, you know, a, a, a store or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Storage, all the foods will be belong automatically to uh, the federal government. And um, all the vehicles in America will be belong to the federal government. They're allowed to remove any group of people from any place to any place that they see um, um, that, the, that the federal government uh, will decide to uh, remove. And we do know that there is um, railroads from the big cities to the concentration camps and there is a train sitting and waiting on the railroads and, and uh, sitting empty. And the, uh, um, uh, all those things, if, if anyone really want to see them, then you can see them. It's available to the public. I know that the, the uh, Haredi community, they don't enter to the Internet, but in YouTube it's possible to see. Uh, things and and um, and people that don't 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 enter to the, to the to the internet, then it's okay. But you got we got to be at least aware of uh, its the uh, of their existence because now it's can become a, a dangerous place to live uh, in 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 a in a in a country where uh, those are those the rules and and that's the. Uh, you know uh, uh, the reality around around it. We got to understand that um, there is a, um, also um, uh, in case of a martial law, then and then and then it's it's become to be a government um, um, go uh, federal government, and then it's a, a military control, and uh, then the rules are being going to change rapidly and America would not look the way uh, you view it now. And uh, we got to understand that the concentration camps can hold 50 million people. And the question is, who are those people that's supposed to be there? Now, there is many excuses to the government uh, just because of the um, you know, September 11 occur and a lot of fear uh, in, in the public a, 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 a cause uh, um, um, cause uh, um, a, a question or people were seeking solution to ask from the government to uh, solve the problem because three thousand people were killed and um, what's going to take place the, the people were asking keep asking what's what's going to happen when uh, America going to fight with the arms maybe there is seven million Arabs in South America, then they can be fifth column and, and they can um, fight from the inside from America, then maybe uh, the concentration camps is what waiting for just in case of what the Arabs uh, are going to fight with, with America. But the point is that there's only seven million Arabs there. And uh, the concentration camps are can ca capable of containing... 50 million people. Maybe, maybe the illegal people, illegal alien. Maybe, uh, maybe the Jewish people. Maybe, um, uh, if in case of uh, in, 
of the incre increase of anti-Semitism inside America, then America will not be able to protect the Jews, and then they're gonna gonna uh, provide them with the solution of the concentration camps. Well, I would like to share with you. I got a phone call from Oliver Stillen uh, from Bnei Brak, and he told me uh, that um, um, Rabbi Yehuda Zev Leibovich, which is a uh, Tzadik uh, Nistar in Bnei Brak, that all the rabbis, you, you, all, all the Admorim used to go to him and to to ask him with Gaon Yisod Olam, and he is being considered as one of the Lamed Vav Tzadikim. And when he, right before he died, he told Rabbi Shtam that go uh, to America and, and tell to the population of America, the Jewish communities, to leave America, to hard to leave America, to rush to leave America, because the president, whomever it may be, he may be, um, will turn to become the second Hitler. Uh, so... I'm just sharing with you what I got through a phone call from Rabbi Stone from Nebuk, which called me, and I'm, I'm reminding you that uh, Rabbi Chaim Kanievsky uh, also uh, directed a, a call to the Jewish community a month and a half ago, and to, I'm encouraging you to listen to the Israel saying, "Come back, come make an aliyah, come to Israel." live here because America is going to turn to a very dangerous place to live in the end of time. And um, I know uh, that Rabbi, the, the Remenov Rabbi is going walking uh, in, in Florida and explaining and trying to encourage people to live America and to make an aliyah to Israel, to Israel. Don't think that you're coming government of Israel think that you're coming uh, to the land of God, that God will protect you. Come with faith and understand that, yeah, I, I know that, that many, many Americans, when they see what's going on here in Israel, they, they tend to think that America is a safe place. Don't go by your eyes. Don't go by your heart. And basically, the Shekhinah right now the, the holiness of God, that uh, the, just like Patach Eliyahu is saying, uh, Eliyahu Navi is saying, "At chashivat the niyama dikharev bet mikdasha, the alana bevet adili." You Knesset Israel, you thought that when uh, when um, when the destruction of the Temple of Jerusalem, then my holiness, my shechina, uh, uh, li, live uh, uh, left earth. To heaven, no, 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 that's not the case. Uh, the Shekhinah went with the nation of Israel to the exile. But right now, it's the time when the Shekhinah is leaving exile and coming back to Hara Moria, to Eretz Israel. And we, the Jewish people, are the son of the Shekhinah. We must do the same and come to the land of Israel because what's going to take place now over the earth, it's the third world war. They're going to fight. Nations will fight with one another because the Shekhinah is living. And now there won't be a peace around the world. It's going to be a tornado of war that's going to turn rapidly more and more. And, and then it's going to be just like a tornado and hurricane of, of, of fight between the nations. And yes, you're right, the, the, the eye of, of that tornado will come and be here around Jerusalem because in New World Order, the, they want Jerusalem as their capital. And they want that El Tisa will be international and to control the world from here, from Jerusalem, as their capital. Why is it? Because they want to defeat the city and the country of uh, the holy country of those three religions and, and, and Jerusalem as the, 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 of the city of the three big religions of the West in its house, in, in their house. So they want to wipe them out. 
the, the FA's people. They want to control through um, Federal Olami Chadash, New World Order, from uh, El Tisoel to the world. So, but don't fear that. We have to fear God. We have to fear the Word of God. We have to go with the vision of the Bible and to understand that the eye of the hurricane is the most safe place to be because everything around it is going to be wiped out, just like in any hurricane. But the safest, safest place will be Jerusalem going to be the safest place in the Third World War. And we got to understand that here, yes, it's going to be the greatest fear that's going to be in anywhere around the world. But the point is that it's going to be only fear here. But around the world, will be destruction. People will get killed. There will be a, a world holocaust. But here in Israel, it's going to be the sheep of Noah from the flood of fire. And here uh, it's going to be the uh, Tzion Tiyapleta. Tzion going to be the redemption, the, 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 the safest place to be, and, and people will live here. The fear is going to be here its purpose is to to uh, to that the people that go by nature only and they don't have faith in God they're going to leave Israel they're going to be leave Israel straight to the concentration camps straight straight to to to, to leave Israel straight to uh, uh, the dangerous places but people that hold to the vision and to the prophecies and to the promises of God will hold above nature and stay here and be saved. Vish'arti bekirbech am'ani vadal v'chassu b'shem Hashem. She'erit Yisrael asher lo yasu avla. Those people that are going to be here and, and, and hold to the promises of God, they're going to turn fear to confidence. They're going to turn fear to, to, to faith in God. They're going to pray that the, and, 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 and tzipita le-Yeshua I mean, they're going to expect that God will get involved in human history above nature and, and redeem them, and that's what's going to take place. People that are going to be able to win the situation will come here because that's the place to survive. And, and therefore, I'm encouraging you, um, and, uh, all the other people in Central America and Canada and South America and around the world, be aware that the Shekhinah is living, living the exile, and now everything going to turn into, uh, and there will be no peace there. There will be only a, a war and a fight between nations, and it's going to get more and more until um, we're going to reach Third World War. It's not going to it's not going to be quiet no more. It's just going to climb and climb and climb. And, and I know that they're going to turn that against us, and they're going to come and blame us, and we expect it. But we got to understand God is doing it on a purpose to take a revenge, to take a revenge of the destruction of the first and second temple because those two temples were destroyed by the Ismailite rays and by the Edomite rays, the second war, the second temple. So therefore, God is bringing them here to Israel to fight with one another and to kill one another on the land of Jerusalem. Just like Zechariah is saying. And the, the, the last turn will be that Ishmael will fall before the Edomite, nine months, before the Messiah is going to come. And those nine, nine, nine months are ba basically the, the, liver, the, the pregnancy and the deliverance of the redemption by those end of nine months, and, and, and then uh, Mashiach, son of David, will come. Now, through the prophecies, through the scriptures, through the Talmud, through 
the Midrashim, we do know that um, uh, only through the nation of Israel and the transcendental power of God that live among us inside Knesset Israel, and we have covenant with God from Mount Sinai, we as a Jewish nation can operate transcendental power and bring God through the covenant between us and him because he is obligated to us to to operate inside human history to defeat the evilness of the new world order through us. And we can save humanity, entire humanity, from the private hands of those people that want to wipe out 90% of the population of humanity. Uh, I'm directing that lecture and, and, and trying to uh, to remind you that Rabbi Chaim Kanievsky were, di were directing his, uh, a month, month and a half ago, uh, uh, his voice to the community, of, the Jewish community in America, saying, come back to Israel. I know that many uh, people that trying to reach out and to give lectures that ask from Rabbi Kanievsky to go and, and, and give lectures uh, around the world and, and to leave Israel, he told them, no, don't go. And so therefore I'm saying, to anyone that live in America should consider that we are not in the regular time, but we are approaching the lending, uh, and, and, and therefore uh, the lending of the plan of, of human history, which is a redemption and, and of the end of time, and, and the third world war coming. And, and uh, as we, everybody can feel it, but they don't exactly know what they feel. But even nature, uh, even nature, uh, the nature of nature, the real nature of nature, it's not what we see. The real nature of nature, it's just like in heaven when Adam and Eve were inside Gan Eden before uh, they committed the ancient sin. And, and that's the, the real uh, nature of nature. And everything that the atheist people are relying on, it's a result of the sin because survival fight and the food chain and the fight between different kinds of, of, of animals, uh, all, all what they see and they uh, translate as evilness in nature, it's basically the result of the ancient sin, but soon as when the Messiah will come and we're going to be able to to uh, to fix this ancient sin by uh, by a Torah and mitzvot and, and and to fix it, then they will not have any head or tail to rely on because they rely. Their point is uh, it, it's, it's, that's the way they tra translate nature as evil. There is no, um, that's not the, the real nature of nature. Samech te samech, ra'im ahuvim ke samechacha yatzircha begen eden mi kedem. Chadesh yamenu ke kedem, we pray that God will uh, renew our times, just like in ancient times of, 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 of Adam and Eve in, in, in Eden. Therefore, the real nature of nature, it's good, not evil. There is no food chain. וגר זאב עם כבש, ונמר עם גדיר בת, ואריה כבקר יאכל תבן, ושיפ, ואליון, ואיט תגדר, גרס, אובר דה פילד, ולא נתקיל אחד את השני, וזה הרבה נשאר של נשאר. ולכן, הכל יחזור לנשאר, 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 But the atheist people basically have no appreciation to nature. They view it as evil, and and therefore, they, if, according to their vision, since there is no God, they turn themselves to become God instead, and therefore, um, they don't even see it as a moral problem because they think that since there is no choice, because otherwise uh, all the entire humanity will 
wipe out. So therefore, we have to choose at least we as a strong people and wise people, we're going to live and wipe out the uh, mass population. Therefore, I'm, I'm saying it's, you got to understand we as the Jews being considered as the greatest enemy of the atheist people because we we uh, are threatening the consciousness of humanity and conquering the, uh, the, 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 uh, the consciousness of humanity by delivering and spreading the concept of God and transcendental power above nature, which they don't like. And uh, therefore they fight the devil, they fight Jews, people, they fight Hashem and Mashiachot. And I thank you for listening to the lecture and uh, hope that you're going to be able to uh, grasp the material and, and, and understand what I was saying and, um, and make the right conclusion. And we hope that uh, Nation of Israel will be redeemed as soon as possible. I'm going to pray for it that everyone, every Jew will be redeemed and, and that we're going to be able to enlighten nations not to go with the Amalekite and the evilness of the world. That's why we sacrifice in, 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 in uh, Sukkot, Tabernacles. Uh, we sacrifice 70 uh, 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 sacrifices for, 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 for all the nations so we can draw them from the Amalekite, from the atheism point of view, from the rejection of, of God, to believe in God, the Yedakol Pauke Atape Al Tov, the Avin Kol Etzur Keta Etzor Tov, the Amar Kol Asher Neshama Ve'Apo, Hashem Elokei Yisrael Malach Mochotov Akol Mashala, Amen Sela. I thank you for listening, and good night.